remain uh, with Al Jazeera English. We're going to go now to Democracy Now! senior producer Sharifa Bokadus, who has made it into the studio. Uh, we're also joined in Cairo by Ayman Mohaldin, the Cairo bureau chief for Al Jazeera English. On Sunday, he was arrested and then released after being held for seven hours. Hi, Sharif. Hi, Amy. Thank you for having us. Uh, standing with me is Ayman Mohaddin. He's the Cairo uh, bureau chief uh, for Al Jazeera. He was detained on Monday for several hours. He's been here since July. Ayman, talk about what happened when he tried to enter Tahrir uh, on Monday. Well, as we have been uh, for every morning throughout these protests, we've been making our way into Liberation Square in the morning, in the early hours. Uh, and on that particular day, as I was entering, I was actually stopped by uh, one of the uh, military uh, officers who was there, and he asked me for my identification. I presented him with my uh, identification, particularly my passport. When he asked me what it is that I do, I told him uh, I was a foreign journalist and I was coming here. Uh, and it seemed to be really enough for him, because he didn't ask me any other questions. He simply took my uh, belongings. And and handed me over to military police, which then escorted me to a little holding area where I was uh, for several hours. And throughout the course of the day, I was immediately, when I arrived to that holding area, escorted by the military police. Uh, we had all of our belongings taken off, on, off of us. We were uh, handcuffed, uh, our hands behind our back, uh, and we were blindfolded. And we were essentially uh, asked to sit on the ground in the pavement for about nine hours or so. Uh, and throughout the course of the day, we were interrogated a few times by different people. Uh, and ultimately, uh, they had told us that they were going to to uh, transfer us to military intelligence, though I think uh, had it not been really for the uh, intervention of a lot of the online community and a lot of people who uh, pressed the government for the release of uh, the two journalists that were there, myself and a, a cameraman, uh, we would not have been released as quickly as we were. In nine hours, it was a long day, but certainly there have been journalists, including the Al Jazeera Arabic bureau chief, uh, who was detained overnight, and he too went through a similar process uh, and was not released for uh, quite some time, actually. Now, Ayman, we've seen uh, a crackdown on journalists, and especially on Al Jazeera. I remember on Wednesday when uh, the Baltagaya attacked the protesters in Tahrir. Uh, uh, one of them asked me if I'd seen any Al Jazeera journalists. He drew his finger across his throat. Uh, a lot were cursing Al Jazeera. Uh, why has this channel come under particular attack by the Mubarak regime? Well, I think, you know, when you look at the relationship that uh, the Egyptian government, particularly uh, the Mubarak regime, has had with uh, Al Jazeera, it is definitely one that they have been disappointed uh, with our coverage. I think they felt that our coverage has been, uh, in some ways, uh, inflammatory, and uh, they have accused us of uh, all kinds of, uh, you know, incitement, really. Uh, nothing could be really further from the truth in terms of our reporting, because uh, on many of the days that the government was the most upset with us, most of our coverage was essentially just live reporting from either outside our window showing the world what was happening. Uh, we've dedicated a lot of resources across the country in places where other reporters weren't, uh, such as Suez and Alexandria and Mahalla. Uh, and we really tried to show the world what was happening really on all uh, levels uh, of uh, Egypt. And I think the Egyptian government, you know, uh, was extremely nervous about that. Uh, it wasn't prepared to handle that. Uh, it shut down our offices. It cut up our uplink facilities. It put pressure on other news providers, you know, other news agencies to not work with Al Jazeera. Um, our staff was arrested. We had, as you mentioned, there was a huge deal of uh, public incitement against Al Jazeera on state television. People were looking for us at hotels, threatening us. Uh, so there was a very strong campaign by the Egyptian government and elements that are affiliated with the Egyptian government to try to really silence Al Jazeera by any means. And, and it was really tragic and unfortunate, given what was happening and the importance of trying to show the world what was really happening here on the ground. Ayman, uh, could you talk about uh, how this compares the enormous pressure that Egypt has put on Al Jazeera throughout Egypt with the coverage you were doing in Gaza. You were the only journalist who was there in Gaza during the Israeli assault on Gaza, only foreign correspondent. That's right, I mean, well, you know, it's a, a slightly, you know, different environments. Both had their own elements of danger and risk. You know, when you were, uh, when we were reporting in Gaza, we were in the middle of a war, and it was a war that didn't spare anybody, whether it were journalists or ordinary civilians. So in that sense, we were caught up like ordinary people there. Here, uh, the measures that journalists are taking uh, to try to be, uh, you know, a little bit more cautious and on the safe side seems to not be enough, because the Egyptian government, at least uh, as far as Al Jazeera is concerned, is really targeting 
targeting Al Jazeera. I mean, we are officially banned from working here on the ground. Uh, our staff, as I was saying, has been arrested. Our uplink facilities have been uh, cut off. Our equipment has been confiscated. Our permits have been revoked. So to our press passes. Uh, and there's a huge public uh, campaign of incitement against our staff as well as our bureau. Our offices, even after we left them, had been torched. So there is a, a much more concentrated effort by the government specifically targeting Al Jazeera. And I think that is a great disservice, uh, not only to the Egyptian population, but to viewers really all around the world. And Ayman, who and is Ayman, doing will this you continue exactly? To Go ahead, Amy. Uh, just asking, who exactly is doing well, this? Who raided the offices? Who torched the offices? Well, Amy, that's a really good question because, you know, pending an investigation, it's very hard to know. But the way it works in Egypt is really the official and unofficial channels. So, you know, officially, the government has notified Al Jazeera that it must stop broadcasting, it must do this. It has put pressure on service providers to not cooperate or not work or provide facilities to Al Jazeera. Uh, various elements within the security apparatuses have confiscated our equipment, have arrested our journalists. You know, my example is one when we were held by the military. That is what happens on an official level. What happens on an unofficial level uh, is perhaps the more dangerous element. Because in situations like this, it's very difficult to pinpoint what the connection is between those who attack uh, and those who torched our office and the government, or perhaps even the ruling regime, or even sometimes individuals within the ruling regime. Uh, what we do know is that uh, people essentially, pro-Mubarak supporters, like we saw those on the streets and that Sharif was just telling you about, uh, they had flyers with them. Everyone saw those. They were flyers that were distributed and handed out. Uh, and they were inciting against Al Jazeera. They were using very vulgar language. They came to one of the hotels where we were uh, staying after we were kicked out of our office. They wanted Al Jazeera to be evicted out of that hotel, and I can assure you it would have been very violent. These elements are the unofficial elements that people here in Egypt closely affiliate with the regime because of previous experiences. We've seen these tactics before uh, during elections and other uh, seasons, but it was very, you know, in this particular case, it was very alarming that it was uh, so geared and so, uh, you know, specific towards Al Jazeera and its staff. And Ayman, uh, considering all these attacks, you have nevertheless continued to report from here. You nevertheless are continuing to go to Tahrir. Will you continue to try and report from the ground uh, despite this and enter Tahrir? Have you been in Tahrir since the arrest? No, unfortunately, I have not been back uh, into Tahrir since uh, I was arrested. Um, in terms of uh, reporting, we continue to report and we continue to have staff that goes into Tahrir. Um, we're very determined on uh, continuing the story. We feel that Al Jazeera is being targeted uh, unfairly and, uh, you know, and, and unjustly. Uh, and despite that, we have taken great lengths to protect ourselves, to protect our staff. Uh, and we're going to do so so far as we can physically continue to report on the ground. I mean, I'm speaking on behalf of myself. I I uh, don't want to leave Egypt. I was told that I could leave Egypt, and I uh, refuse to leave Egypt, you know, in the midst of all of this turmoil, in the midst of all of this coverage, because I think uh, Al Jazeera Arabic and Al Jazeera English have something very important to offer. They're offering uh, the viewers around the world a context that may sometimes be uh, missing from a lot of Western and, and foreign media. Um, and more importantly, they're offering uh, the viewers a, uh, a view of this country that I think is very hard to get uh, in the absence of less and less media. So if they were to take Al Jazeera off the air and silence us completely, uh, it would be a great disservice to uh, humanity and particularly to information. You know, we have been watching, Eamon, Al Jazeera uh, here in New York, Al Jazeera English, though it's very difficult. It's hardly broadcast in the United States, except in Toledo, Ohio, on a cable station, and Burlington, Vermont, though there are major petition campaigns online to get it on uh, cable stations all over the country. And we see how the anchors of Al Jazeera English will not identify the reporters where you are in Egypt, um, just say that was a reporter, because they are fearful. Um, as you feel hunted. That's true. You know, one of the problems that we're facing here really is uh, retribution. I mean, we're we, we're kind of in uncharted waters, so to speak, because uh, when we talk about the challenges that we're facing, as again I was saying, you know, you face the official and the unofficial challenges. Um, you know, if we if we exposed some of the reporters that are reporting from us on the ground, it would certainly create a bit of a, a problem for for them, either on their way in or out in the country and in the future. And more importantly. Uh, 
the community of journalists here in Egypt that is based here um, is a small community. It's not difficult to find out who these people are. Uh, and for their own personal safety and security, we sometimes are concerned that there could be acts of violence. You know, we were hearing earlier about uh, the shooting incident. We know that other journalists have been beaten, and we know that other journalists have been detained and intimidated. Uh, so we go to great lengths to try to operate in an environment that is geared very much against us without compromising our uh, own principles and our own editorial integrity. And the importance of that is that, uh, yes, we can pull out all of our staff from here tomorrow morning, and we can simply report on what is happening here with the testimonies of eyewitnesses and other people and experts and analysts. But at the end of the day, if you don't have your journalists on the ground and if you don't have them seeing firsthand and reporting for you, everything then becomes hearsay. And I think when you're in that situation, it becomes very dangerous for the viewers to not know who they're trusting, to not know whether the information is accurate. So it's important for us to keep a team of professional journalists here on the ground while keeping as many voices as possible still contributing to the whole discussion and the debate that's taking place in Egypt. And Ayman, you've been here since the beginning of the uprising. You provided a very riveting live account as uh, January 28th, the day of rage, took place. You've been going to Tahrir constantly. Where do you see this movement at? What do you see is happening right now? Well, you know, I think uh, Egypt is at a crossroads, and I think right now it's a, uh, it's a battle of wills. I think uh, what you're seeing emerge in Egypt is uh, a new dynamic, a new relationship between the state and the people. You know, for such a long time, uh, the government here uh, essentially saw Egyptian citizens as subjects of the state. And for a long time, that's how uh, Egyptians were dealt with. They were dealt with as simply subjects of the government. The government had unyielding powers, uh, and the relationship was a vertical relationship between the state and the people. I think what you're seeing now uh, is an empowerment of people. You know, we always hear this expression that Egypt will never go back to the way it was on January 24th, and that is Egyptians have been empowered. They have broken the fear factor in terms of how they deal with the state. Uh, and now they have legitimate rights and grievances, and they want those to be enshrined in the way the state deals with the people. The question or not, uh, the question really is whether or not uh, the Egyptian government is going to listen to the Egyptian people, uh, take on these challenges, impose these changes on itself, bring those who, uh, you know, perhaps were involved in wrongdoing for decades to justice, uh, and give people, the Egyptian people, a greater voice in the way they govern their daily lives. And I think this is where we are right now. We're at this crossroads. Who emerges and how this changes is still being played out behind uh, closed doors. So it's still, it's by no means uh, has the story died down or the events have quieted.